So yesterday, whilst I was on Twitter, I came across a tweet from Zach Bowden from Windows Central. Of course, this tweet led to an article on Windows Central. And this wasn't something I was initially going to cover because I didn't think there was a whole lot of new information in this article. But I thought, well, maybe it's in my wheelhouse. I kind of need to talk about it. If he's talking about it, I kind of have to do these things. You know, you guys seem to enjoy it. But then I saw Neo win did exactly what I'm about to do. So I said, well, if Neo Wynn's going to do it, who who am I to say no? I'm no better than Neo Wynn. So today, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to go to the original article from the source. It's been 1,001 days since Microsoft unveiled Surface Neo. And in this little article, Zach goes over pretty much what we know about Surface Neo, which really wasn't a whole lot, but he kind of condenses it nicely in this article. And there are a few interesting tidbits here. So if you don't remember, all the way back in October of 2019, Microsoft came out on stage. They announced the Surface Pro X. They announced the Surface Duo, which we did get. In fact, we've gotten a second Surface Duo, which is really good. And they announced Windows 10X alongside Surface Neo. I just actually did a video kind of re-reacting to the Neo announcement all the way back then. So definitely go watch that. If I can remember, Maybe like a card or like a link down there or something. I might be able, I can't remember anything, but maybe I will. At any rate, 10X and Neo both announced. Both seem to be fairly far along, at least what they were showing. They were like, hey, we're a year out from launch. And of course, now it's been 1,000 days and neither one of these things has uh, reached the market. 10X is officially fully canceled and dead. And unfortunately, Seems like Neo is also canceled as well. The thing we saw showed off there, that dual screen thing running Windows 10X with that kind of chipset, that kind of design, just isn't apparently ever going to be released, which is a sad thing to see. We do have here the specifications that we knew about on this article, which is a really weird looking foldable device that looks like this and that does actually make a lot of sense and that's kind of in line with what they were trying to do these processors were meant to kind of be not an arm processor but they're kind of meant to be like an x86 processor doing its best arm processor impersonation and that's kind of what this thing was built on well that whole project from intel i believe is completely dead as well so now you've got neo and its software is canceled and its system on a chip its processor uh, is a better word for it, is also canceled. And that's why one of many reasons why this is just not going to be happening. This is a really interesting bit here. Apparently the SIM tray was hidden underneath the volume rocker. That's your volume rocker. That's brilliant because as he says here, that keeps things looking nice, clean, minimalistic. Very, very smart. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 storage, weight 655 grams, which is not a whole lot if we're being honest. That's pretty light. 5.6 millimeters thick. I mean, that's like, that's duo two thickness, but uh, incredible. But with it being so thin and so light, it did have several problems that he touches on here as well. And I'm not going to show you all of the pictures and all of the words because I want you to go actually read the article, which of course will be in the pinned comment and in the description. I'm just telling you some of the stuff. So go read the article, go give them a click and go view some ads for them. But because it was so small, apparently a lot of people did not like how tiny it was to actually use as a laptop. This thing looks like it's going to harken back to the kind of netbook era of the cramped tiny little keyboard and the little bitty screen. Personally, the keyboard thing was cool. The keyboard folio that would kind of flip up around and kind of cover half the screen. That's a really cool idea. But to me, the use case I would like to have seen it would be in book mode. That's how I use my Duo. I never use compose mode where you flip it around like a laptop and thumb type on it. I never use that. So for me, using it in that book mode, book orientation, probably would have been cooler. But like I said, a lot of people had a lot of complaints about how cramped the keyboard was. And also it's really prone to overheating because look, it wasn't an ARM processor. It was a in, an Intel x86 processor pretending to be an ARM processor. But you can only pretend so well. It's generating a lot more heat and the thing is so very thin that like Duo and Duo 2, I just had a couple of comments the other day, people saying, hey, my Duo 2 gets really hot on the right side near the camera bump. That's where the processor is. It's really thin. It gets hot. It's just, it's just hard to get rid of heat in a device that is so thin. And then on top of that, you're using a processor that's just going to make more heat than an ARM processor would have. He talks about the fact that Windows 10X did not natively support Win32 apps. 
So a great many programs that you might need to use on the day-to-day -day basis every time you would launch it would have to run a full Windows inside a VM just to launch that legacy app, which made things incredibly unpleasant to use and very, very slow. Windows 10X apparently just wasn't very good. It kind of reminds me a lot of the Surface Duo's story when it was Project Andromeda running Andromeda OS, this software that was meant to kind of simulate a notepad that you could write on the home screen and all this cool stuff. The software wasn't very good. It crashed all the time. It was very unstable and eventually the software got canceled and they put Android on it. Well, with Neo, the software apparently also wasn't very good. You'd have to think at some point, They'd have to do something else if the hardware managed to survive, but the software was apparently far from Neo's only problem. And to kind of double back on the thing I mentioned earlier about a tweet to touch on the Windows 10X thing, Rich Woods from, I believe this is XCA Developers, indeed it is, he tweeted uh, in response to this article, Surface Neo has been dead since Windows 10X was killed, according to his sources. Microsoft is not focusing on adding any foldable or dual screen support to Windows 11. Despite Intel making an Evo spec for foldables, it is now up to OEMs to build custom software. And this is actually really interesting to me because at one point Microsoft was effectively all in on foldables, on dual screen foldables, specifically being a new kind of device. They're gonna pioneer this new sector of the market. And you fast forward 1,001 days and now they're not even bothering to try anymore. That is absolutely incredible. Something hit the wall at a high rate of speed and that has been abandoned absolutely completely. Disappointed, I'm sure, for a lot of you to hear. Zach kind of echoes a similar sentiment that this thing is effectively dead. It would have to be restarted as a whole new project from the almost, yeah, from the ground up. I was gonna say almost from the ground up, but no, it would be literally from the ground up at this point. At least we still have you, Surface Duo, a device that is probably the only dual screen device that we'll ever get from anyone, at least how things are going. Guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Again, if you've watched this video, this is required of you, go click on the link to the article, go give a click to the person who actually brought this information to me to bring to you in the first place. Fair is fair. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.